Okay, I'm going to be reading scene one, which starts on page 1026 in your packet. And a key piece of scene one is Creon's speech. This is the first time he's addressing Thebes as the new king, and he's summoned all of the elders of Thebes to hear his first speech, and also he's asking for their support. Now, a key piece of understanding this is Creon is going to speak about the battle that Thebes has just gone through and won. The battle between Polynices and his invading army and Edocles, the former king of Thebes. Now we know that these two men were brothers and we know that Edocles was the king of Thebes. So essentially Polynices murders not only his brother but commits regicide which is killing a king. So, as the new king, obviously, Creon's going to be a little wary of people who kill kings. And he's not going to be a big fan of Polynices and the actions he took against Edocles. So we'll hear first from the Caragus, and then Creon will do his opening speech. But now at last our new king is coming. Creon of, Creon of Thebes, Menonese's son. In this auspicious dawn of his reign, what are the new complexities that shifting fate has woven for him? What is his counsel? Why has he summoned the old men to hear him? Enter Creon from the palace. He addresses the chorus from the top step. Gentlemen, I have the honor to inform you that our ship of state, which recent storms have threatened to destroy, has come safely to harbor at last, guided by the merciful wisdom of heaven. I have summoned you here this morning because I know that I can depend upon you. Your devotion to King Laius was absolute. You never hesitated in your duty to our late ruler Oedipus, and when Oedipus died, your loyalty was transferred to his children. Unfortunately, as you know, his two sons, the princes, Oedicles and Polynices, have killed each other in battle, and I, as the next in blood, have succeeded the full power of the throne." I am aware, of course, that no ruler can expect complete loyalty from his subjects until he has been tested in office. Nevertheless, I say to you at the very outset that I have nothing but contempt for the kind of governor who is afraid, for whatever reason, to follow the course that he knows is best for the state. And as for the man who sets private friendship above public welfare, I have no use for him either. I call the gods to witness that if I saw my country headed for ruin, I should not be afraid to speak out plainly. And I need hardly remind you that I would never have any dealings with an enemy of the people. No one values friendship more highly than I. But we must remember that friends made at the risk of wrecking our ship are not real friends at all. These are my principles at any rate, and that is why I have made the following decision concerning the sons of Oedipus. Oedicles, who died as a man should, fighting for his country, is to be buried with full military honors with all the ceremony that is usual when the greatest heroes die. But his brother, Polynices, who broke his exile to come back with fire and sword against his native city in the shrines of his father's gods, whose one idea was to spill the blood of his blood and sell his own people into slavery, Polynices, I say, is to have no burial. No man is to touch him or say the least prayer for him. He shall lie on the plain unburied, and the birds and scavenging dogs can do with him whatever they like. 
This is my command, and you can see the wisdom behind it. As long as I am king, no traitor is going to be honored with the loyal man. But whoever shows, by word and deed, that he is on the side of the state, he shall have my respect while he is living and my reverence when he is dead. Okay, I'm going to pause reading here. And the reason why is it is incredibly important that you take the time to break down Creon's opening speech because it reveals a lot about him as a leader. Um, at the beginning, when he talks about our ship of state, which recent storms have threatened to destroy, he's speaking in a metaphor. He's calling the city-state Thebes a ship. In recent storms, meaning the war, the attack, that Polynices launched threatened to destroy Thebes. But Thebes has now got Polynices attacking army under control and actually they have left Thebes and Creon stepping up as the new king. So Creon's letting everyone know that Thebes is safe and that they've been victorious. In the second paragraph of his speech, here, he's really speaking about his ideals as a king. He's saying that, you know, he knows he can't expect their loyalty, but he does expect it. And that he's the type of king who is never going to place anything above the safety of Thebes. He's saying, I'll do whatever it takes to keep Thebes safe. I'll do whatever I need to, and I will never place private friendship, like family, acquaintances, friends, and their needs over the needs of the state. This is interesting, and keep this in mind throughout the entire play. Then the third paragraph is where he's speaking about his new decree, his new law, regarding the bodies or corpses of Edicles and Polynices. And he has two very different plans for these two men. He's going to bury Edicles with honor, with all this ceremony, and really honor him as a king who died fighting to protect his country. Now we know that Edicles did break a promise to Polynices because they agreed to alternate years as king, and Edicles never gave up the throne. But Creon doesn't acknowledge that. Creon just says Edicles was a king, he was doing what he needed to, and Polynices was completely in the wrong. Oedipus, excuse me, Creon describes Polynices as a traitor to his country, and for that crime, he's going to leave Polynices' body out in the open. And he makes it illegal, punishable by death, for anybody to pray for him, to try to bury him, or to show respect for his body. And the problem was, there was a belief in ancient Greece that a soul wasn't at rest until the physical body was buried. So this is not only hurtful to Polynices' reputation, but it's essentially dooming him for all of eternity. And Creon's doing this to send a message to the people of Thebes and to anybody watching what's going on in Thebes that if you mess with a king, Creon is going to get you. And he's not only going to shame your body and disrespect you, he's going to make sure that your eternal life is also painful and full of suffering. So he finishes his speech by saying, you know, this is my plan. You can see how smart it is. You can understand why I would do this. And he again emphasizes that he will not tolerate any traitor. 
But anybody that shows that they're loyal to the state, he really means him, he will respect them while they're living and they will have his reverence when they die. So he's really, again, emphasizing that idea of loyalty to him and to Thebes. So in the next clip, I'll start reading um, with the Caragas's line that starts on 40, uh, line 48. So we'll hear how the elders of Thebes kind of respond to Creon's plan. <laughs> 